following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, guys. This is Larry Pesavento. I've got my John Logan Halloween mask on today. And uh, I customarily wear this every once in a while when I want to scare the rats out of the building and things like that. So, hi. I'm John Logan filling in for Larry Pesavento. Uh, JG, uh, thanks for mentioning that TFNN now has forced me to do the hour, which I love to do. And I apologize for Larry not being here today, folks. I'm filling in for him. Maybe we'll get through this. All right. Let's pick up where we left off. Last hour, we were covering some of the basic usual suspects, kind of bouncing around as we always do, try to get an edge on what's going to happen during the day. I'm uh, going to talk a lot about a little bit about individual stocks here this hour. And again, um, it's a pleasure to fill in for Larry. He does an incredible job. I know you guys were ramped up waiting to hear from him. Here's the S&Ps. Uh, you know, I'm, this is, we didn't talk about this the first hour, very mixed bag here. A lot of the ETF sectors negative, a little bit of a rally in the futures this morning. What are we up? Let's see here. This is e-signal I'm showing right now. We're up about six or seven points. Uh, here's the 240, kind of reached the targets, that 2043 general area, the unfair highs on the, on the 240. The unfair lows on the daily. Let's just point those out in the scanner really quick. How are we doing now? We're good? Okay. Seeing the screen? All right, great. So as we go into the future section, okay, here we go. Let's go down to the S&Ps here. So, again, there's that bottom. There's that 2043, and there's that 2043. Top of the box on the 240s, bottom of the box on the on the daily. So let's just look at the landscape view. Let's look at the level of the market, where we're at right now. We're just hovering above there. So, again, I'd like to see the market open. I'd like to see this thing get back down below 2043. You know, market's kind of sloughing off the, uh, the sell-off here, but I, I like how it's rallying back up into these inflection points, letting the market come to us. I think you got a chance to look at some shorts here. This could be looked at as a little bit of reversal action, but again, I'm looking at this crude, you know, a little bit of a mixed bag that may come off. Market's been kind of watching that. It's been watching the 10 year. Let's hit the 10 year again really quick for a little bit of a review. And again, we pointed this out. This is something I think everybody's got to keep in perspective. Now, all bets are off below 129.02, but remember a couple of weeks ago, or actually a month or month and a half ago, whatever that was. Let's just call it late April. We were down into this, you know, 10-year, let the market come to us, back the truck up, stops in. What did we reach the low there? Ah, 129.02. Hit it to the tick. We're higher than we were. So rates are actually lower than they were over a month ago. Keep that in perspective even after they came out with this rhetoric. So, again, um, you know, the 10-year – is in the balanced area still, even though we've broken down on the intermediate. There it is. That's the intermediate breakdown, the announcement. Um, financials kind of probably a little depressed over that. We talked about Goldman Sachs in particular last hour being maybe a play for that on the short side. Got to put your stops in on that thing, though, because uh, the specialist is evil in New York that runs that stock. It's an evil company and an evil specialist. They're both one side of the river on the other. It's like the uh, outlaw Josie Wells when they were trying to get across the river with the, uh, you know, the ferry. You're in the middle. They're on both sides. Evil company, evil specialist. Watch out. I'm just kidding. They're probably nice guys. So we're going to take a look at some individual stocks. What a movie, huh? Outlaw Josie Wells. 
Love that movie. So as we look at the, uh, the ETFs, we're going to drill into these a little bit. We're going to have some, some kind of bouncing around here pre-market with the uh, breaths here. But I want to take a look at the utilities. I always go back to this because, remember, thirst for yield situation, the, uh, the XLU obviously came off here. Okay, Nice little bounce back yesterday, but uh, right in the middle of a fair auction, nothing technically damaging here for the long term in the XLU. And actually had a close above $47.99. So looking at, you know, what's something to play here in the XLU? Uh, I'm going to take a look at NI. And again, we're sitting basically on fair lows daily, bounced off weekly, 2362. This stock has acted extremely well when support and breakouts have been offered. And uh, NI, you know, again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is one that's looked extremely attractive. NRG, I like how this is acting. This is a daily coming off support here. This is the weekly trading above profiles. You got a, a really big, decent little, you know, 1447 support on the, on the weekly unfair high daily 1504. So you got a little bit of a collection area there to play defense against. I like how this is acting. Um, Duke energy one in my own backyard here. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So this has had the breakdown. This is one of the relative weak stocks. Keep that in mind. This is probably not the long opportunity here. And this is one that looks uh, heavy. Keep that in mind. You've got a resistance area, 77.83. If the, if the XLU rallies and this thing can't get past that level, you might want to look at this as a trading opportunity on the short side. Man, sometimes on Sunday, it's just awesome when they have like a Clint Eastwood day. Kickback. It's raining outside. Man. Clint Eastwood movies are awesome. Okay. So going back into the indices, excuse me. Tank on it. Going back into the indices, we're looking at the S and P's down here ranked on a daily. We're going to go back into the dashboard here. We're going to look at some opportunities. Let me check something really quick here, guys. We switched over to a a different database here for the scanner. I want to check something really quick. Yesterday, in fact, and that, that may have been causing some of the logouts. And by the way, you're going to get an upgrade um, notification today via email and or on the scanner. Talk to my tech guys to make sure that's ready on the next break. Wasn't planning on doing Larry's show, so I uh, was going to focus on that, but we're going to focus on, on the breaks. We're going to take a look at some uh, some stocks that are trading, excuse me, stocks that are trading below profiles on the weekly, below profiles on the daily, and we're looking at stocks possibly that are going to sell off easily, and we're going to be right back, folks, right after the break. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Am I back live? I had to go. Okay, great. All right. So what we were talking about uh, we're, earlier, we were talking about the S&Ps. Let me go back to that. We were talking about the notes, trying to get a bearing on what's going on with some of the individual stocks in the XLF. But let's take a look at the S&Ps. You know, I don't like how each sector really literally breathwise doesn't seem to be getting out of its own way. This is the daily 2043, 2043, 240 unfair highs, daily unfair lows. I like to see this thing get back down below there. And, uh, again, relax the stops a little bit, I think, today and uh, kind of step away and see if this thing can kind of fall apart and at least get back into the 240 balanced area. And then, you know, it's a Friday. I don't think a lot of people are going to be piling into these today. I, I, I may be wrong, but I think the, uh, I think the, uh, the news is out, what Yellen and her gang were talking about. It's, it's, it's you know, the 10 years not actually believing it very well. And uh, therefore, you know, possible impending attitude towards U.S. economy, not exactly that rosy. Let's take a look at uh, some of the other things going on this morning. We talked about the yen. We talked about a couple of currencies in the first hour. Uh, you know, Japan is without question, I think, considering stepping in. And doing some kind of intervention, which would cause that currency to sky again, or excuse me, devalue again. That chart that we looked at on the yen would be, and I'm going to pull this back up really quick. This is why we don't want to short the yen around these, I'm going to pull this up here, around these 11040 areas. You see how this is crowding again? Uh, this was the targets 500 pips up from that 105 and a half back to truck up situation. You know, this is a Friday. Having a Friday close, I think we're going to close probably above 110.40. <clears throat> so, again, this is not a shorting opportunity just because we have rallied back up into those unfair lows at 110.40. Um, you're probably going to have some intervention over the weekend. Again, not a big fan of rolling the dice, but put a gun to my head. I think the yen is, is definitely still a long. It's just that take some weight off when you make 500 pips in a trade like this. 
A um, couple of stocks we want to look at from Thursday's earnings. Hey, Matt. Okay, so <clears throat> 2149, decent news here. Um, back now, we're not showing this on the chart yet because this is a daily chart and it's not reflected in e signal yet. If you go to the scanner, you're going to get, if you pull up AMAT, you're going to get that pre market. We're showing, you know, level of the market, right? Pre market. Okay, so where are we at? We're at weekly unfair highs on AMAT. And again, the dailies and the weeklies won't update yet because they're predicated on e-signals information. So we're way up here. We're above dailies now. But guess where we're at? Pre-market, we are at the unfair highs around 2160, 2167. Uh, if, you've, if you've been long aim at, I think you've got to take a look at taking some of this off around these weekly unfair highs. Is this a shorting opportunity? I, see how this works? I love how this thing kind of came down here and crowded it and, and held support. But right now, you've got to be willing to take some off. I know we're at previous highs from about a month ago in AMAT, but you've got to be looking to take some off. We're at the top of a balanced area. This is the, ex, the outside envelope of that fair auction. And some people don't know I'm on the second hours here, so I apologize for... For some of the Skypes that are coming in while we're doing the show, I'll try to turn that off. One of my tech guys is saying we are going to have the upgrade to the scanner in about an hour. Um, so looking at AMAT, you got to be willing to take some off there. Another stock, Gap, GPS, a lot of retailer stocks, JCPenney, a couple of those we're going to talk about. Um, you know, this kind of led led the march down when it comes to the retailers again i'm, I'm kind of with trump on busting up amazon that that's gotten out of control um gap uh trading pre-market 1746 the good news on gap is and if you go into the scanner and you search for gps there it is. Pull it up. This is kind of good news here. Um, you've got a yellow peel back happening, a new daily profile, which will output this morning. You'll see that in the scanner. Then you'll have a chance to play defense. These business models, even with somewhat good news, these business models are, as you know, the retailers, brick and mortar. Not like it used to be. But again, if you're going to look for a trading opportunity, a trading bounce here, you will have a new profile. We'll wait and see where that happens, and you will have a chance to play defense. Finally, as you can see, Gap hasn't really given you any reasons to play this from the long side, and we'll have to wait and see. Today, we'll get a new profile output and a chance to play defense. We may just at least explore a new fair auction. I'm just guessing right now, but that fair auction may be Maybe up into like 18 and a half, something like that, but we'll see. But keep your eye on this one. Look for the new profile, which will be out. Joe, the new the new upgrade does not have the alerts. We've got everything hammered out for that in the scanner, but we don't want to put that out yet. We're going to test that a little bit more. So you can go in, you know, look at your custom portfolio, be able to get indications of when things are changing. So you don't have to constantly look at this thing. It'll it'll let you know, pop up, make a sound, et cetera. Uh, another stock, Walmart. We're going to take a look at this one. Now, a little review on Walmart. Uh, and here, here's where we are. When we started looking at the breakdown below 84, that general area, and then the retest, it's really been okay to be short until... You know, we broke above, closed above, retested it around this 60, 60, 80, what is this, 60, 96, let's call it 61. And uh, <laughs> I'm getting hammered with tech situations here. So pre-market, uh, looks like we're trading 69.03. So what have we done? All we've done is we've rallied back right up until that 60, let me restate that. We're printing this morning, 69.03. So, again, just like 
aim at. We're up into these weekly and for highs. You've got to take some off. You've got to be willing to take some off here. I don't care what you're thinking about Walmart. We're up into the outside of the balanced area, the upper envelope on this. My feelings on the market in general, probably a little more bearish than bullish. So as we look at that, we're going to go into uh, the S&Ps again. We're going to look at this. Remember, we stated getting back down below 2043. A lot of breath negative situations in the scanner. And we're going to be right back, guys. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back. I'm John Logan filling in for Larry today. And, uh, you guys hear about the thing in Philadelphia? They're gonna put a rate, basically rate, raise soft drink prices via a tax. Monster Beverage. Let's take a look at that. A health tax, if you will. Uh, looks like we're trading pre-market one forty-eight ninety-four. So. This is the situation on Monster Beverage. Last couple of weeks have gotten back above 147.31.
kind of hovering above there. This is not really a soft drink. Um, this stock looks good. 147.72 on for highs on the daily. If I go into the scanner and I pull this up, well, there it is, MNST. Uh, as you can see, sitting right at the weekly M for highs, the daily M for highs. Here's the level of the market, not wanting to go down. Market's kind of come off a little bit here. I like this. I like being able to play defense below this 147.31 that I'm sharing. You can blow this up for folks like me who need bigger print. Uh, we'll put that f function in quickly. If you guys want to hear something, well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> it has nothing to do with trading. Um, so as we look at this, we want to look at the indices profile heat grid also today. Here's the daily. I mean, this is why I'm not super excited about getting really long the S&Ps on a Friday. And, uh, you know, the world's not really that excited about the internals of, this, of the – I mean, we put a lot of effort into this. This is a massive amount of number crunching to give you four time frames on each stock in every in this index in the world. We're actually – we should have the ASX, ASX 200 up here and the Philippine Stock Exchange to add two more. So that will be 19 exchanges total. I think that will be in there by Monday morning. I know the Australian will be in there by Monday morning. So we're continuing to add so you can kind of get an idea, at least breath-wise. If you don't, a lot of people don't drill into the Nifty 50 and say, hey, I want to buy Barat Petroleum Corporation. You know, I mean, I know a lot of you guys out there aren't looking at this, but on interactive brokers and uh, Thinkorswim, I believe, you can trade quite a, you know, you, you can you can look at a lot of different stocks on a lot of different exchanges and the scanner will kind of give you a, a roadmap, a landscape to, to look at these instruments. In fact, you can go in here. Ah, there's the Australian ASX 200. It's already in there. So let me do this. Let me take off the S&Ps and let me add, let me add the, uh, the supporting cast is bringing me coffee. Let's add the Australian ASX 200. And as we say in North Carolina, Viola. There it is. So we've got it in here, and uh, the breadth calculations for this are going in over the weekend. Okay. So, again, we've got the Australian stocks in here now. We might have the Philippines. There it is. Oh, my God. It's already in here. Okay. I have to uh, give the tech guys a uh, dollar raise this week. Um, so we've got the Philippine Stock Exchange in here, the uh, Australian Stock Exchange. We're working on the breadth calculations for the heat grid. There's a lot of opportunity. Have you guys ever looked at the Philippine Stock Exchange? A ton of opportunities there. A couple of stocks kind of run it. San Miguel, a um, couple of big uh, real estate companies. It's, it's wild. That country is really converting over to... Uh, in my opinion, from kind of third world is to uh, to another state. Interesting to be over there and, and see that unfold. Really wild. So going back into the going back into the S and P's. Let me pull that back up. Where are we at here? I don't think there's any other product out there that gives you this much information in one glance. So what we're doing also. We have this upgrade today, which is going to fix that log off, log on feature. But you're going to be able to choose the exchange that you want feed on. So, you know, right now we're kind of giving you everything on this at one time and populating a lot of it. And that's actually kind of causing it to just pause every once in a while to, to grab that data. Now you're going to be able to choose like the S&P market, the NASDAQ, the futures, the Forex only leave everything else alone so it'll be kind of a quicker output uh, that you can choose from not to not to grab everything all at once all right so we looked at some stocks in fact let me do this let me use a custom sword here let me go down into breakouts so there's not too many stocks that are breaking out right now by definition and what is this a handful 15 maybe some of these are, are the, if you look at 
the type here, you can see the qualification. A lot of XLF stocks have broken out this week. Um, so if you're looking to trade some stocks in the XLF from the long side, I'm a little concerned about that sector based on uh, how the 10 years acting. But if you look at, uh, let's just say BB&T Corp. Ah, North Carolina stock. Here we go. We're going to take a look at this. This is a daily breakout there. Found support on the weekly. If you're looking to buy a strong XLF stock, this is one where you can play defense. 34.79 unfair highs on the daily, down into 33.42. Not a bad looking situation. Showed itself early. This is our long term weekly on BB&T. That's the drill there. A couple other ones. Capital One Financial. You know, I hate this company just for the sake of hating it from all the mail I get, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about there. Here's the weekly found support there. This is where you play defense, 68.78 on COF. Got a request in the den, KRE. A couple of other stocks on the breakout mechanism. And remember, this is showing, and, and in fact, as you saw that dynamically update right then, some stocks are opening, it's 9.30, they're starting to print, some of the things are changing. Um, Citigroup breakout on the weekly and the daily. There's the daily printing now. Defense below 43.87. Not super excited about buying anything in the XLF, but these are the ones that are showing themselves. So let's take a look at KRE. Let me type it over here. KRE. Here we go. So, here's the, uh, obviously it was relatively strong before that announcement, and we're looking at uh, 3781 on long term to play defense below. Here's the situation on the daily, 4078 resistance. So again, uh, I think it's kind of XLF-ish here, a little non-directional. It's a regional banking ETF. Again, not super excited about buying these. You've got resistance at 4078, support at 3781. It's I, I think we're churning around at best here, but again, a relatively strong instrument rather than being relatively weak based on this long term setup here. It's interesting how that showed itself early. We'll be right back, guys. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, don't miss out on the Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from EverBank. This is the second running of their popular five year US dollar denominated CD, which gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this indexed CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The May 19th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member. FDIC. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of 
trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. Up next on TFNN. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And I think we're honored to have a uh, a guest on right now. Steve, are you there? Well, I don't know if honored is the word, but uh, I like introductions like that. I wish I got uh, the red carpet like that more often in my everyday. <laughs> How you doing, my you, friend? You you won't in in any other facet except for me. You know that. No, I I assure you that I'm gonna play <laughs> I'm gonna play my first round of golf actually for the season later this uh, morning, and I can assure you they'll probably show me the exit door, not the uh, the the red carpet there. Wait a minute! What you got the day off? What the heck's going on here? Did, oh, did uh, yeah, it was on. It was on the virtual schedule there, John. No, nobody. Okay, no one approved that. But okay, okay. <laughs> Steve, Steve is uh, a very good friend of mine for starters, and he's he's a, somebody I've worked with for over ten years. He runs a lot of the uh, the the mouse traps that we have in Taz, and uh, he's he was he's in Chicago, right downtown. Was on South Wacker forever, and um, we've been working together again for a long time, and uh, you know. Steve is. Uh, I was talking about brokerages and how that's an uphill battle uh, before Steve. And Steve used to was a you know one of the biggest brokers in da downtown Chicago for a long time. And um, you know how that game's changed a lot. And uh, you know so it, it's interesting that you know you we've worked together so long, even when you were a broker, and you've used this information that we've you know, put together together uh, for a long time, even when you were a broker, and, and now you're kind of exclusively focused on some of the uh, some of the things that you know involve in the uh, in the in the technical analysis scene here now. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, uh, what have you been looking at lately uh, relative to some of the information that we use? Well, just a, a quick uh, touch on some of the things you talked about. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the shifts I've seen in the brokerage community, because mm -hmm. I think I do have some unique insight, and uh, the ties still run very deep uh, mm -hmm. down there on LaSalle Street and mm -hmm. in New York City, where we have uh, still some very strong relationships. You know, we've seen a, a big shift. Even when I was in the brokerage world for 14 years, we started to see the desire for the end user, the customer, the investor, mm -hmm. trader, wanting the information that was previously kind of held back by the brokers, the advisors. The that, um, I don't know, maybe it was uh, they essentially wanted to hold that back so they could justify their existence. But yeah. um, <laughs> literally, I mean, I don't I don't know if there was kind of, you know, if they figure out that they could have this information and they could just do this on their own, then, uh, you know, they wouldn't have to pay us as much. And there probably is an element of that going on. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, you know, rates for, for execution are uh, a fraction of what they were even 10 years ago and, mm -hmm. and probably, probably even just a few years ago as the, um, the competitive landscape there has been a big, uh, benefit to the the end user investor. Uh, what's really been neat for me now that I'm I focus as you know John largely my efforts in getting the good word out about products like uh, the scanner and some of our other market intelligence is the fact that uh, empowering the end user who's looking at some of our tools and looking for some technical insight objectivity, they can do that now. They no longer have to say, I hope my advisor sends me a, a re good research report this month because that's what I'm going to have to hang my entire 
uh, hat on for my idea this month. Instead, you use products like the scanner and our technical analysis tools, and you get in front of the computer yourself when you're ready, and you say, you know what, I'm ready to find an opportunity today. Help me find where probabilities are greatest, and then you get to deploy that on your own. It's a very empowering uh, kind of a, a, a freeing experience uh, to, to right. feel like you actually have some control of uh, where your portfolio is going, when and where and why. Uh, and um, anyway, so uh, it's been neat to see some changes there. Yeah, it's. I was, we were talking about the regulatory overhead too that has just kind of creeped into that market um, or that aspect of the trading arena on the brokerage mm -hmm. side. And it's, 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 it's run a lot of people, um, a lot of brokerage firms have – you know, God had to just take on so much more regulatory overhead, and it's amazing, um, you know, the efficiency, I guess, that's been forced to happen in that particular industry. Yeah. Um, yes, that, so. that, that is um, uh, about the time I uh, retired from the brokerage world was, <laughs> was when uh, things started getting uh, – harder to to conduct business and we're not talking no. about i'm not talking about your you know your corrupt uh, financial uh oh. situation i'm talking about just boutique good you know uh high integrity firms that just don't maybe have the the manpower or financial capacity to staff you know four lawyers full-time on staff to push paperwork around and I um I, you know, I, I know I could probably name a, a half dozen of r really good longtime brokerage firm owners that have essentially sold their operations to bigger uh, firms or even direct to the clearinghouses because they they said that it turned into what used to be empowering traders for opportunity to trade the markets has turned into pushing paperwork that has nothing to do with why the customers are coming to a brokerage firm. And right. so, you know, I guess that, that that's a sad reality of regulation. And yeah. there is, there, make no mistake about it, there's absolutely a need for, a continued need for the right type of regulation, uh, but in balance with not sabotaging, you know, good high integrity firms and brokers that are trying to connect with with customers looking for opportunities because it does end up being a, a lose lose um, when they don't find that right uh, mix there. So I, I agree but, uh, fully. It's crazy. I agree fully. Uh, can can we talk about coffee here? I'm showing it on the screen. Uh, what time frame are you looking at there, John? I'll bring it up I, on I, my chart. I'm looking at the weekly right now, Steve. I'm showing it in the den. And we okay. talked uh, this past week about having to really get a weekly close above 133.63. And we just poked our head up there and then just completely fell apart. So thank God, you know, we were taking that mechanism. Um, you know, profiles of edge tire here, Steve, as you're, as you're seeing probably, um, relative to how they were scaling down, they kind of reversed a little bit. And we were looking for a confirmation with a close above 133.80. Is that, let me see in the scanner, it'll be a little bit easier to see. I'm seeing it here too. Yes, I'm looking at it on my uh, my charts here as well. I got the same levels as you. Okay. Okay. And, um, and I see that. I, you know that the initial you know one dynamic profile ago. You know we also had that break uh, above that 126.20 level that started to have me thinking about the, the the long side, but the current that current balance area that fair auction definitely on the high end comes in at 133.63. I'm looking at it here live on my charts in Chicago, and um, you, you, I see the the test up there and the fall off. Uh, in some of the training mechanisms we do, as you know, with, with our end users, we also look for opportunities where markets pulling back into some of these congestion zones because they afford some lower risk inflection points. Uh, but it'd be a big deal uh, if we get to close above that 133.63. I think yeah. uh, any, anybody with, on the bear side of the equation is going to be asking for trouble. Yeah. Um, how about gold? What's your thoughts on gold? I mean, I'm going to pull up the uh, the gold situation here. Um what well, you know, uh, we're trading above profiles on the weekly and the daily. We kind of did a little bit of a dip into the balance area yesterday, and now we've kind of retraced and hit this one twelve fifty three, twelve fifty four this morning. Um, you think we're heading higher on this? Gold gold's a market that is very near and and, and dear to me. Um, it was okay. one of my M my MVP markets at, uh, last year. I always like to give uh, MVP awards for markets that have been kind to me throughout the year, and uh, this was one of them. But um, th this this is a market that for uh, for a lot of reasons I think has had a hard time. Uh, continuing to make strides and staying above that 1300 an ounce mark um, mm -hmm. is, is you know as well as I with your experience in commodities uh, there's there's some psychological 
uh, matters that come into play that influences people's perception of the yellow right. metal as a safe haven. Te- but we're going to have a break really quick. Can, can you hang out for the last, last uh, segment? It's like four or five minutes. Can you hang out and let's keep talking about this? For you, anything. Right. See you in a few. We'll be right back, guys. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I think we've got Steve Dahlstuhl with us from Chicago. Steve, you there? I'm here. Great. Well, let's, let, let's finish up with gold here. Um, I, again, you know, uh, uh, I want to talk about the scanner right after this, Steve. Um, where do you think gold might be headed uh, long term? Well, that's a that's a, a real good question <laughs> that I, I know if I if I could give you we the put, guaranteed not answer. Not to put you I, on the spot. I, Go ahead. Yeah, it sounds that sounds like a prop bet out in uh, Las Vegas waiting to happen there. <laughs> um, so I like the, so a key areas I'm looking at daily charts here on on uh, gold uh -huh. lately staying staying above for me and I'm looking at charts over on one of my screens here staying above mm -hmm. the 1253 yeah. uh, in some change mark is going to be key on that daily chart to stay above those value areas that uh, yeah. that we look for and if um, I don't know if my webcam's on here live today but you know we got these balance areas and it's really important that these markets um, hold above where all that congestion is uh, we start getting into the thick of things on 
a market like gold, we'll tend to see some sideways price action. But you know, I'm I'm optimistic that this this market still has some legs to still go ahead and make another run towards the 1300 mm -hmm. an ounce area. But mm -hmm. that's really going to be, uh, I guess, the caveat to that is going to be, uh, as a technical trader, we need to be continuing to close above uh, that, those high value areas um, uh, in this situation here. So the daily chart, I'm still, uh, I still think there's some more upside. But that being said, as you know, with our, our users all over the globe, our shorter term traders have actually been doing some things even on the short side in um, some specific time frames. So, you know, I think it's really time frame specific. You, there's yeah. not a, a single answer for me to give you I'm the, for, on the street or when I'm uh, at the airport sitting there with my Taz on my laptop and my three portable screens. I'll have people looking over my shoulder where I'm just trying to have my, uh, you know, wait for a, a layover flight. And people say, what are you doing there? And then people want to pick my brain. And the first thing I'll ask them is, well, you, you tell me, you know, what's, how long do you want to be in this? Uh, trade because then once you give me that information I'll give you some insight as to where your opportunity right. may very well be but you... wow I heard the music already okay so I guess uh, Larry still ends a little earlier than mine Steve thanks for coming on today guys we're getting you a new build in the scanner I understand it's still logging people off the, the uh, tech guys will have this out we'll send an email out and uh, hopefully we'll clear this up and uh, you'll see the Aussie 200 and the Philippine Stock Exchange and then sees profile heat grid. Thanks very much. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.